are live. The last few days, the last week or so, there's been a, a video out that's, that's shown up on all the networks, all the, all the social media and all that stuff, showing a large patch of garbage that, and plastic that's floating around the, floating around the ocean with a diver uh, filming himself underwater. That has gone hugely viral. And uh, today we're happy in studio to have the guy behind or in front of the camera, Rich Good Horner. Afternoon. Hi, Rich. Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Good. Good. Stressed, tired. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is a little bit. But did you expect this thing? I mean, did, did you expect the video to go so so viral as it has? Yeah, we, you know, we, uh, we went out diving, went to Manta Point, which is, as we both, we, uh, we all know, you know, it's an awesome site, and I think still probably one of the best Manta sites yeah. I know of. Is it also known so as a like, Manta Guarantee? Yeah, almost a Manta Guarantee. And um, <laughs> we got there, and, and there was a few boats in the bay already, and there was this huge slick of plastic in the bay. And oh, so you can see it already from... Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you usually can, you know, you always can see that, that there's plastic there, but this was just really big, and it was all just pushed in and a big wiggly line and and it was you could see that it was going to be over the uh, over right next to where the cleaning station was so we jumped in uh we went looking for mantas um and then uh we got to the rock uh the big cleaning station rock and it was just this cloud of plastic and because um a lot of my mates are doing the research on the island and yes and in other places of the world as well that were the mantas so i thought okay have to document it um give to them i've tried documenting rubbish before that i saw a couple of years ago that was a uh, kind of big cloud but it didn't really come out nice uh, on the footage mm -hmm. but this so i was just wandering through with my gopro on this big pole um and uh filming it uh, with me in it and just filming it straight and um yeah, and the it, quality came out very well so it was, yeah uh, very happy with that clear water yeah. sharp video and uh, we could really see very nicely mm. what's going on there and that's why i think also had this uh, huge huge impact beside yeah, the yeah, terrible yeah. effect uh, so i you know i saw um i swam around and we went off and um uh, you know we were looking for the mantas off to the side because they didn't really um, appear uh, they weren't at the rock at the beginning um, so we we went off exploring went over to the towers over on the left um, uh, swam around there on the, and then when we got to the, the edge of the shelf that goes off down to the deep then one cruise past uh, nice and slow is that um, the one you see in the video where you no, where you tilt down uh, um, that's later that one oh actually oh yeah that um, that was later um, and then we wander back to the cleaning station, um, saw my mate who's guiding, and they said that's in three, so we wander back to the rock. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where we saw there's, um, well, I saw another one, got a nice bit of close footage um, of one sweeping over the side of the rock. And then, then I kind of went up and did a lot of my filming near the end of the dive, swimming through. So we were just um, going to head back to the boat uh, with the, you know, the, uh, that most of my at the end of the video that I, I posted it's just us swimming out doing a safety stop really so how many mantas do you reckon they were on the side of, on that day we think there was kind of three or four three or four mantas yeah because I didn't um, I didn't take enough notice to, to recognize them um, but I think there was three or four that day yeah, which is low numbers for yeah it's low okay. so did you when you finished the dive you went back home did you edit it right away and, and put it out that day or did it take a few yeah, days? Um, no, I, I got back. Obviously, we all talk about it on the boat. And then um, when I got back, um, you know, the researchers were out, uh, most of them. Um, so I just sat down and looked at my footage um, and um, and thought oh, I'll, I'll knock it up, knock up a video and then I'll post it. Because, you know, if I see any cool mantas and molars, I like to make my friends jealous on Facebook. That's what do. it's there for. Um, so I um, knocked it together very, very quickly, um, very quickly, uh, and then just posted that. You know, I just put the, the location and the date on it, uh, and then um, put it on Facebook. Uh, and then, you know, a few people saw it, and everyone was like in a shocked face. Right. 
this is disgusting. Right, and then they share. And then they shared it. And then I think perhaps a couple of people that have kind of got, you know, got uh, and got some friends, a friend like Erica, she uh, was kind of actively posting it to, you know, people, uh, you know, kind of environmental um, types uh, and stuff. So it, it was going off kind of in the science direction for a bit. Mm-hmm. So the the initial inquiries I had about it was like university professors oh, okay. uh, and kind of NGOs and documentary makers. A lot of the, the first messages were, were from them. And how long, like you went to bed that night, you woke up the next day and it was like, whoa, that kind of thing. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, it's all blurred into one <laughs> whole long day, I think, the whole week. Um, yeah, I think it was getting a few, you know, you like, tens of thousands of hits like by the end of the day I think I can't I can't remember I don't think you can you can get the analytics for a personal page but um but then at some point and I can't remember what day I possibly I, I can look through my messages and work out when it was but it rolled over to 500,000 it might have been the next day yeah and then like an agency emailed me message request did you expect it to to become that viral once when you posted it i i kind of thought that it looks um what i had did look alarming uh and did look um news yeah it it's it like looked news. newsworthy exactly um but i did not ex- expect I thought um, within the diving community that it would go possibly viral, you know, um, mm. between, you know, everyone in the regions here and then you've got all the manta researchers and stuff and, and those people around. So I, I kind of half envisaged that, you know, because it did look, did come out well for, you know, the documenting uh, the plastic. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought that it was going to be a, a, a useful and, and um, uh, pop- uh, popular, yeah, as it were. educational, um, educational video, you know, so people could use it. Yes, um, because uh, you're saying it uh, perfectly. You know, like uh, it, it, it's like the the rubbish is there, mm. and uh, let's say lots of us don't see it. Let's let's say if we come from uh, the Western world mm-hmm. side. You know, they, we have a good rubbish collection. They take it away, and yeah, yeah. we are not aware like he's there. So, but uh, rubbish is there. Mm. So we're producing a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's not only a problem, let's say, that we have down here. Mm. It's a problem we have globally. We yeah. are producing too much plastic uh, garbage, mm. and definitely this sort of uh, happening and videos like it's a kind of uh, wake up. Call yeah, oh, to yeah. e- should work as a wake up, like mm. you said, a, a educational a wake up call to everyone. Hey, hang on a second, what's going on? Have you seen that kind of trash before? There, I mean, you've you've been to that dive site. Yeah, I've been there quite a few quite times. A few times. Um, have you seen that kind of thing before? Not there. Um, that site, uh, very occasionally you see it there. It doesn't. It is a bay, a manta point. Uh, it's, it's the point where you jump in, not a headland. It's confusing the, mm-hmm. the naming in. In Indonesia, so we um, we occasionally have seen it in the bay there, but there's the other manta site, Manta Bay, um, where the mantas and the young mantas are actually seen a lot of the time feeding. Yes, and that we do see more often because it is where the plankton gets pushed in, and that's why the mantas are in there feeding. And the plastic gets mixed up. And the plastic, technically, it is plankton. Exactly. (laughs) Anything that drifts in the ocean uh, is plankton. And if you're on a drift dive, then you as a diver are plankton. Basically, they react in the same way because the plankton floats with the current uh, and the plastic is over there floating with the current. Mm. So when we get converging all this uh, plankton, organic uh, stuff, like you see lots of uh, leaves and things. Palm fronds. And the plastic bags, yeah. yeah. Where do you think, where is it coming from? Is it, you know, why... Where did it come from? Did it come from Bali or Sulawesi or somewhere outside? Or yeah, or um, like uh, no idea for certain where it's come from. I, and when we've looked in the past, it's been Indonesian products uh, on the labels. It's mm-hmm. clearly Indonesian. Um, I don't know, 
yet. Uh, I'll be uh, asking around to see if people have seen stuff from outside of Indonesia because the Indonesian through flow is coming down from the north like under uh, the Philippines down into the top of Indonesia and all the way down and then a quarter of it squeezes between Bali and Lombok we're in the middle and then the three quarters goes off off to the east and sweeps around uh, around Timor and uh, down between there and Australia. And you were saying, I saw one of the, your, your interviews, you were saying that it comes because right now it's the rainy season in Bali so yeah. it's coming from the rain pushing garbage into the oceans from streams yeah. and things like that? Um, so it's actually, um, we've had another wet, wet season uh, and the last two years and they've been La Nina years. So the year before was El Nino, which was drought. So Indonesia had big problems. I think Java ran out of agua. I think all the agua gallons were going to Java and, and stuff. Um, so that was hard. And like the water on the island on Lembongan, because there's so many new developments, everyone has a well, all the water went salty, the well water. Mm -hmm. um, but then the next year uh, was La Nina year, and then we had some decent rain, yes, um, uh, more than average. And then this year we've had even more than average. Yes. So there has been a lot. I personally haven't been diving that much. Uh, had a bike accident, so I, I've only done a handful of dives this year uh, in the past year. Um, but um, you know there has been um, consistent trash out there in the. Uh, during the wet season from November time onwards um, but um, what we saw one week ago was mind-blowingly uh, exceptional and boat captains fishermen all the the uh, dive guides and, and instructors they've all uh, the ones that saw it were blown away by right. the scale of that one bigger than normal yeah was there a particular uh, piece of uh, trash that you could identify being the most in there like a product uh, or something yeah um i didn't yeah didn't really spot anything sometimes you can you get a lot of those single-use cups with the um with the, the film on the top the um cup. and those you see a lot yeah. uh, and they're very recognizable and they're kind of a really useless form of plastic yes um, they cannot recycle it yeah, right and um, and then you just see a lot of plastic bags. The plastic bags, they're probably the most visible part of the pollution. Mm -hmm. But they only probably, I think they only make up a tiny percentage by weight of the plastic in the ocean. Okay. But they are the visible bit. And they so are the dangerous one. They're the one that the some, turtles uh, yeah, identify as jellyfish yeah. and uh, potentially other uh, animals and too. And one of the interesting things that you always notice with the ocean currents and the way it pushes all the, the plastic together and where you've got shearing, you've got currents moving past where you've got islands and the wake of the islands, um, it kind of strings out the plastic. So it will sort out the plastic in different densities. Okay. So literally you will It get, regroups them by... Yeah. by so you get the heavy plastic probably at the back I'm guessing and then more forward you'll just get the plastic bags that are about that big right. and everything like if you look on the video uh, when I'm on the top of the cleaning station um, everything looks like the same it's all the same kind of plastic film plastic bags and it all kind of looks the same weight uh, and there it was because it, uh, the cleaning station is right near the cliff and it's quite shallow it's only three four meters deep that naturally bounces the water around so the plastic instead of floating then bounces down into the water column so that's why you had um the whole column our swimming right, past below. was just yeah. this um beautiful uh you know consistent mixture um of, of mm. plastic and then the organic stuff at the surface yeah most viral videos that you hear about on social media, they, mm. they pretty much they just stay on social media and that's it. Yeah. But unlike those ones, yours, this one, mm. uh, it has crossed over from social media to the mainstream. You're getting a lot of interest from the mainstream media. Yeah, a lot. And we've been seeing you on things like BBC and, yeah. and, and all that. How's that been? Um, daunting. God. Um, 
I'm usually a pretty shy person, like being in front of a camera. <laughs> it's not. I'm usually behind it, you right. know, mm-hmm. like taking photos of of people, and you know, everyone knows that I always hide um, from them. Um, so it's yeah, it's scary, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think um, okay, it's going back to when I posted it. Actually, uh, in the story as when I posted it, I just had that first paragraph as um, oh the you know the see what the ocean currents brought us today, um, and I just had that as the comment you know because it was just oh yeah look at this rubbish you know and it was just out there t- for my friends uh, mm-hmm. and stuff and people that c- that kind of know about it anyway, but then obviously I uh, was getting this extra attention. Um, so I then sat down and wrote uh, a brief explanation about it and saying that it was abnormal uh, and, and it was late in the season and, uh, and stuff. So I wrote uh, like a couple of paragraphs yeah. uh, underneath. Because uh, I, I think that was an important move because right now the perception out there yeah. is that, uh, oh, damn, I, if I go to Bali, I want to go diving. That's yeah, what yeah, I'm gonna get. Yeah. Like it, it's a, uh, it's an ocean mm. full of plastic, which uh, yeah. actually today is not. Yeah, yeah, you no, know, the, is, the current moved yeah. away. Um, but then as it started to go massive, then I sat down for hours writing out and and subtly tweaking all the statements and my friends finding the proper good wording. friends were i have my ex-girlfriend doing my grammar and spelling for me right. and uh got my other friends suggesting stuff and and so i was going through um um adding links like i, I spent hours looking at like, all the points i then added i then like went and learned a lot just in that one day uh, about the problems um and then included um links from from good sources i think um so i then hopefully there's a kind of a document that accompanies the video on facebook yes. um but sadly um i did try and add that to the uh youtube video that i'd added um for sharing with the scientists and the ngos um but the youtube description uh doesn't allow that many characters because oh, I'd waffled so much right. uh-huh. so uh, I only included just the the thing oh and, the, and again the next day obviously the important thing is that um, I then met some dive guides and instructors that, that had been there that next day and yeah there was absolutely no sign of the plastic and it the, the ocean current what it brought in it just moved on and moved it off right off on its merry journey off into the Indian Ocean. Exactly. So it's not somewhere. that uh, it disappeared. It just no. went somewhere else. It's, it hasn't gone. It's just gone somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. But the then we, we go mm. back into that category of uh, things and the feeling of, uh, I'm not seeing it there, mm. so I can uh, maybe turn my back yeah, on yeah. it, you know, which, which we should not do, right? Out it's, of sight, uh, out of mind, which is, yeah. It's so common we world. are uh, causing, as I said uh, earlier, mm. so much waste and yeah. uh, we give priority to the uh, packaging and waste and the economy part of it, mm. you know, like, oh, this sells more because it looks more fresh. I wrapped just a single uh, apple on yeah. plastic wrap, you know, and uh, things like this rather than just take it home and wash it later, mm. you know. Like, and uh, we're going the wrong direction and this is the result you know like in uh, places where the facilities are not there yet Mm. we can notice that more and uh, i think uh, i hope you know like uh, you know mike and i have a business here in bali and uh, you Mm. know of course we got telephone calls too you know like people are about to come over here and they say like hey guys uh, how how is it going uh, Mm. over there I don't know if I want to dive in plastic, <laughs> you know, like this. Of course, if you hear me, like it's time to come, it's now. You yeah. have to support uh, uh, the community here to make a change in mm. general. But uh, uh, the, the, the thing is, uh, you know, we all have to understand that we are all part of uh, this, uh, this issue. Oh, know? absolutely. Yeah, no, there's literally no one in on the planet that is exempt from the yes. responsibility us in the western world 
uh, and the developing world, uh, the, the, the sort of more developed developing world, probably have a slightly larger responsibility, but uh, everyone, hmm. you know, e everyone is included in, in yeah, trying to exactly. deal with it. So we need to live also by example, mm. you know, like we cannot just uh, point fingers out there. And uh, so you must have been going through few things that uh, we uh, give some thoughts about uh, things that we possibly can do. Yeah. Right. And uh, what uh, what are solutions, let's say, as individual, like we can mm. all do something. We cannot just stay there and say, government, please, can you go and fix yeah, it? Yeah, what yeah. can we do like as individual? Um. Everything, every solution is so linked to the others, though, uh, and dependent on the others. Like, you know, if I say, uh, always put your trash in a bin, that's very good behavior, but is there a bin? <laughs> yes. Is there a, a trash can to actually put it in? So they, you, need, you need infrastructure, you need the people to act responsibly, you need the packaging companies to to Act package responsibly. Yeah, it needs to be. That's where the you need the government to, to pass laws that that just make sure that companies package responsibility uh, and to keep the infrastructure maintained. Uh, and then um, you know every level and children, you know adults, Education. old people, everything. Um, obviously, and the one I uh, have raised briefly uh, on my interviews and, and on my um, post and that is that um, if I just compare my experience growing up in the UK and then out here is that I grew up and we had this campaign that ran f for as long as I can remember the Keep Britain Tidy campaign and I and I only learnt last night and this is it's, yeah I, it's crazy that I didn't know it, it was just a charity and they mm -hmm. had set up in the 50s uh, and it was actually the Women's Institute in the UK. Okay, and so it they, wasn't a government, wasn't no, a government no, not thing. at all. Uh, which does explain why it lasted so long because government's policies change with, it, with any change of government. Um, so uh, they had set out to keep Britain tidy in the 50s. Um, ironically, we missed um, International Women's Day with that post by two days. Yes. You know, th this is... Uh, you know, one woman um, uh, in who was leading the the Women's Institute back back in the fifties that said, "Okay, we're going to keep Britain tidy." So all through my childhood, there was uh, the adverts that they had paid for on the TV. They used to get all the superstars of the day, celebrities um, that you know every child knew, and they would be, you know, telling you, "Hey, kids, don't drop litter. You know, put it mm -hmm. in the bin, right. in the trash yeah, can." Yeah, I remember those days. You and know, like also in uh, Switzerland where I was yeah. raised was like this mm. that uh, we get lots of uh, education coming through and yeah, you yeah. go in the mountains and collect your rubbish and so on the education is one of the most important thing but uh, again aren't we then just going on hiding it you know because I put it in the bin then from the yeah, bin yeah. goes where? Well, yeah. Goes um, in the rubbish dump. Yeah, but yeah. I don't see the rubbish dump. And then uh, there was also like a recent video going viral on uh, Facebook about some uh, UK uh, officials uh, that they were saying, oh, we're shipping this uh, rubbish to China. Oh, yeah, and, and you know, stopped. Yeah, we rather <laughs> ship China it. China said no anymore. Yeah, exactly. So China yeah. then said anymore. That's why it came out. Oh, we used to send it over yeah. there. And OK, now it's not going there anymore. So where are we going to put it? You know, that, like, yeah, so that, uh, and my previous life, I was a mechanical design engineer. So I, my brain just sees problems and tries to make a better way of uh, fixing it uh, or, or making it work better. It's just what my brain always does, kind of escape it. So I, and I've, you know, the whole trash problem, you know, I've been aware of and noticed for a long time. And, and there are, and I have gone off and investigated lots of, uh, novel ways of dealing with the waste and there's been stuff on the TV like landfill mining has anyone heard of landfill mining nowadays and this is going to be an interesting topic to watch um, because we have thrown away so much useful stuff so uh -huh. many ra raw materials so many so much plastic uh, and when it does land up in a landfill site if you can get it all into one place 
and okay in Europe we're blessed uh, with the the strong laws uh, the landfill sites have to be of a very specific type uh, a sealed bottom and everything so they're actually a very good place to put it um, you know it's the best available option for mm-hmm. the most part and um, now we've got this store we can use it as a, a mine we can start mining it and they have the machinery uh, that that all the uh, again what the recycling people are using um, all this technology and machinery is becoming mature so they can separate off so many different types mm-hmm. now even from the stuff that's old yeah old land. absolutely yeah. and so they can just take a big front loader dumping you know buckets and buckets and buckets of of trash into this machine and all these different processes do their magic uh, and then you can get all the different waste streams they've got other industrial plants where you can put anything in one end um, and then get it from some weird really weird sources you know residential industrial farming and stuff and you get fuel oil out of it which runs the whole plant and you get loads of excess uh, and then you get all these different streams of, of waste and, and like um, uh, organic waste and inert parts. Right. So the, the, for me, the technology that's coming online is going to be very interesting. Um, so landfill sites are going to be a valuable resource and there's going to be people making a lot of money out of those landfill sites. Definitely. You're becoming a bit of an expert on garbage these days. <laughs> I've got a lot, yeah, a lot of rubbish good. knowledge. Um, but So, yeah, the technology in the future is pretty good. But, yeah, collecting it uh, is, uh, is pretty important. Now, you, you've been talking to loads of different media yeah. all over the world. Um, any weird questions? Any, any sort of like, what? Did you really just ask that kind of, kind of um, the, things? Yeah. The, Anything funny? The famous one, um, and it, I was speaking to BBC World in Singapore, on mm-hmm. my first interview, and um, she asked me if it smelt. How do you remember Which, that? obviously, like, every diver's, okay. like, just, yeah, uh, you know, and laughing about that. I mean, well, what's obvious? Come on. You are underwater. Yeah. You are yeah. rabbi, the, the, yeah, rubbish you know. on top. Um, I, I wonder, do you remove your mask and uh, give a nice... I didn't, uh, I didn't think to do that. Um, <laughs> but, obviously, I think uh, what they're getting at is that, you know, when you turn up, if you see this big slick, um, in some areas, like in the UK, uh, we used to have a massive problem with s- raw sewage going out, especially uh-huh. after a storm, you know, where they've got massive storm drains and stuff that they've had to put in. But, yeah, if you were on a boat, that probably would have stank like crazy. But what the, the, the trash that we see floating around here, it's, you know, it's just trees, leaves, branches, palm fronds, coconuts. Uh, and that stuff, and then plastic, and all the plastics washed yeah. by the sea and the rivers and the sea uh, and the drains, and then it's just covered in the algae, the green algae, which just covers everything that's in the water for five minutes. Um, so it would just smell like driftwood that you'd find on the beach, mm-hmm. you know, or the, the seaweed, at, at the, you know, the, what's left at the high tide mark. So um, it was a genuine question. It just probably wasn't as relevant. Not as worded as well as yeah. it could have been. Yeah. And they could have, you know, asked a more valuable question in those very valuable Because two, it's three quite minutes. short. Exactly. It was a very short interview, obviously. So sadly, that was a kind of a, you know, a wasted question on that one. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I could see where they were coming from. But it just didn't really have much... Impact. It wasn't applicable, yeah. really, in this. Even case. if it's mess or not, what, yeah. what's the big deal? You know, like yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the big deal is there is that much garbage yeah. in the water. Yeah. I mean, let's stick to that. But I'm, you know, I'm sure someone or uh, you know could make a meme out of it. Yeah. <laughs> a funny meme. <laughs> Does it smell? Yeah. How about the How about the Indonesian media? What What have they been? Have you been interviewed by them? Yeah, this any? morning I was on um, uh, Metro TV. Um, quite early this morning. Um, I've had a few requests. I'm going through answering a lot of uh, interview requests at the moment still. Um, And yeah, uh, it went quite well this morning. I think they were also interviewing um, the Environment and Forestry uh, Minister, I think. Um, But yeah, so um, 
I'm gonna um, I'm answering questions with um, the media, uh, the the local Indonesian media and stuff. So I expect probably a, a couple more. I'm not sure. I okay. I've got a That's lot. That's very of good. So the questions. ball is still rolling. Yeah, and even it doesn't seem to have that. Ironically, the throwawayness of other stories that um, mm -hmm. that you know you you yeah, you get your fifteen minutes of fame kind of thing, and everyone's looking at me, and then the next minute, you know, they've forgotten what my video was. But I, it does seem like that. Um, yeah, I'll apologise now, but I think you're going to see my video <laughs> more often. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, you know, it's the. Uh Hopefully, we, as we said before, it will bring some big change. Yeah, I know, like. and and the and what was starting at the beginning with the correspondence with people is that I've had a lot of um, people that are making documentaries, uh, NGOs, people that are doing um, lectures uh, and and presentations uh, and university lectures and stuff like that, and they you know, they ask for permission um, to use the footage, and definitely they can. They can use it for you know all of those purposes. So I probably like the next you know Plastic Ocean and and those style mm -hmm. documentaries. That there's going to be quite a few with me in it. I think and my good. my footage. You're becoming famous. Yeah. Well, it's, it it seems then that it's very much it was you know sort of a in the short term it looks like a negative because it's shocking. It's like wow, mm. that's a very negative uh, yeah. looking piece of film. But in the long term, uh, it's actually quite a good thing because it's opened a lot of people's eyes yeah and it, you know it's made an issue of it that people are looking at, okay what can we do to uh what can we do to improve this what what can we do to change yeah and, and for us uh you know my friends that have dive businesses that are, that are working out here and you guys uh, again uh you know invested uh in the diving out here um everyone has been kind of screwed over uh, definitely by the media with uh, the story of Agung, Mount Agung, the volcano. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all sit in here mile, uh, miles away from a volcano that you can see on on the horizon, watching it smoking, uh, and then the media portrays it that like half the country has had to evacuate. Yeah. Right. The apocalypse yeah. is imminent. And then some of the Australian media and some of the uh, the uh, infamous UK media just publishing the alarmist stuff so sadly um you know a lot of my friends lost a lot of business because of those reports uh and this kind of negative you know the the news mm -hmm. media you know good good stories don't really sell no uh, yeah, they want just, the, the shock and, value and you know humans most likely to listen to bad news sadly and it's yeah just a absolutely that's what the trait. mainstream is all about most of the yeah. time is bad news however is uh you know if we can see some positive in it mm. at least it's happening during our low season yeah oh, that's it and <laughs> it's again, not the middle of the high yeah, season uh, and again it's you know when i was um adding the notes to my thing is explaining that you know um you know that it's the low season it's the wet season um, so, you know, it's not a, if it was going to happen and, and it's only going to be happening in the low season, um, you know, not when people come here in the high season, they like, never we, see we really don't see any plastic. No. And yeah. People no don't realize it. Mm -mm. My friends get a lot of repeat customers and when they've come back in the different seasons, you know, and seen just the, the plastic we do get, which is not much, they're horrified. You know, yeah. and then you get, comp what they get complaints on uh, on TripAdvisor and stuff. You know about the plastic and blogs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if they had seen that much, like then they would be absolutely justified in, you know, complaining. Um, but, but luckily, but it's a phenomenon. Yeah. So it's not you know like that occasional thing. Mm. You know, uh, unfortunately, it is a phenomenon that it comes out uh, with the rain yeah. and, uh, and all the rivers get flooded yeah. and all the rubbish that is stuck in there yeah. flows through uh, through into the ocean. Mm. And uh, so we need to do something yeah, <laughs> so yeah. about it. Yeah. You uh, you got in contact or the the Indonesian got uh, the provincial mm. or the national government. 
someone has been in contact with yeah, you in different ministries? I had a really interesting uh, yesterday. I met up with the um, the director of maritime education and training, and then a few of his colleagues, and also local um, government officials. Um, I can't remember all of their titles. Um, but yeah, I had a, a really good afternoon chatting with them. They were very interested to hear about the story. Um, you know, th- one of the guys there was, um, you know, they I think they do tracking of of these events and, and the plastics and, and stuff like that in the ocean. So there was a lot of technical discussions about, you know, where, where it might have come from and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that was really good. That's you good. know, they want to know the, the details. They want to know... Mm-hmm. Positive, uh, yeah, positive yeah, yeah. meaning. Uh, and then, obviously, you know, and they, uh, interestingly, they had, I think, yeah, this morning in San Diego, there, I can't remember what the big conference was, but some big international pol- political thing, I can't remember that they were attending and they were going to be presenting about this, this video. Oh, wow. Um, and, or talking about it, I think. Um, but as, as we all know, um, the whole plastics thing is completely global at the moment and the awareness the past I don't know six months I can't remember when it really started to, to peak to definitely after um, uh, you know on the BBC we had uh, Sir David Attenborough's uh, The Blue Planet 2 yes yes and on episode 7 of, of that he very much yeah told us all what he has seen you know and in his lifetime he jumped into immaculately clean oceans and and now he goes diving uh, in the submarines and stuff and all all they see is plastic even mm-hmm. down at a thousand meters on the bottom of the ocean in the middle of nowhere everywhere he goes and and everywhere we have been uh um we we see plastic now so the global awareness um uh is massive and then our my video has come now and because of the existing um awareness of the plastic that's i think why it has gone so big yeah millions and millions of views um so it's on the back of what was already happening and again you know it's not an indonesian thing uh all the countries have got their own programs and their own problems so and um, their own populations complaining about their stuff um and um okay uh indonesia or bali uh, has has had a, a rough few months they uh, infamously had all the plastic wash up on the beach in legia and kuta and yes, i can't sir. remember the other beaches um so that obviously hit the media uh and then obviously my video you know mm-hmm. uh, on top of it um, well, but hopefully we'll create this uh, reaction and uh, yeah. but we, we get something yeah. done like there was a pledge out there with the with the girls uh, with uh, no plastic a pledge yeah. from the governor of saying Bali plastic bag free 2018 yeah you see a lot of that yeah, now where different yeah. stores will not give you a plastic bag yeah, yeah. yes so it's, it's coming it's, it is it's and definitely getting there some you know just like the plastic bags and the stores are something that we we personally can can um, choose to, to do and you know, say knowing to bags and, and stuff you know there's there's a lot of technology that we could just get some truly uh, recyclable or bi- biodegradable bags just for carrying you know they don't need mm-hmm. to be uh, food uh, yeah there is a company so here in Bali that's yeah. uh, cassava bags Oh yeah, and uh, those are uh, fully biodegradable. Mm. Bi- biodegradable. So, yeah, yeah. So and uh, it looks uh, exactly like plastic. Yeah. yeah. So like the liverboard uh, associations uh, committed to that, and yeah. uh, lots of uh, the operators over here mm. now they use these cassava bags, and yeah. they're proud of using those. So we have over there few businesses that they are helping us, giving us the tools. Mm-hmm. To, to to move towards the right direction yeah, and yeah. put us on course on the right course mm. and uh, I I personally believe that uh, they should have a little bit more of uh, government help you know worldwide oh, yeah, I say yeah, worldwide yeah. they should have a push if the they're trying something and yeah. it's something good the for the world the pressure now from the people is is going to be pushing the governments the world over um, that they need to do their part in in you know creating this fix 
Um, and, you know, the big part of their job would be pressuring, you know, the supermarkets and the uh, food companies and the manufacturing companies. Because, you know, you go to a hardware store nowadays and it's super depressing. Every single item, you can buy 10 yes, screws. Yes. As you're talking now, I'm passing some images of uh, just yeah. like a supermarket where everything is wrapped yeah. up in... Uh, in plastic so it's uh, shocking yeah. and actually on our side of the world it's even worse because uh. now we get all this uh, pre-packaged uh, let's say for instance salad yeah. you have like <laughs> a whole shelf of oh the salad with tuna the salad yeah. with that and they're all coming with this uh, one time you use a single mm. single use plastic that yeah. you just throw away and it's it's not even recyclable so yeah Ag again speaking as an engineer uh, you know uh, a lot of my lectures at university were on plastics and that it's an amazing material and has so many uses so many varied properties so in many places that the use of plastic for packaging is the perfect use and there wouldn't be anything that is better you know it's the best uh, material available um, but uh, we have so many examples of the overuse and the over packaging mm -hmm. and the unnecessary packaging so like the salad items so many you know fruit you know you got a shrink wrapped you know uh polystyrene thing with a banana in it you're like yeah what the? Well, it has the perfect it has the perfect <laughs> cover already yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Why do you, need to wrap it in um, you know and they're serving you, you see these pictures i don't know if they're true but they must be you know, of a peeled orange in pl uh, wrapped in plastic on a polystyrene tray. Yeah. And like, come on. Um, there was a great... We can peel, we're becoming so lazy. Yeah. Right? We're becoming so lazy. We are used to, oh, oh no, I, I buy the one already peeled. Convenience is a big thing. But um, I saw one little article in it, uh, from a few years ago that had a very good um, way of tackling that um, to give the supermarkets a hint. And is uh, when you when you're at checkout and you're paying for the items you can unwrap everything that is unnecessarily packaged keep the stuff that does need it like perhaps the meat items and mm -hmm. other things uh, and then you can just leave the, all that plastic on their checkout counter um, you know for the supermarket to clear up to clear uh, and up. that they do have some very efficient uh, waste management um, systems put in yeah. place because they have a lot of boxes and yeah, of waste, packaging yeah. anyway so it's the most responsible place to leave it technically mm -hmm. um, and uh, here, here in Bali actually here in Bali there is uh, also like uh, one uh, more than one shop like if I go here in Sanur I can find a few shops where I can buy us actually things uh, without any packaging on yeah, and yeah. I bring my own packaging and mm -hmm. I can wait and uh, my veggies and things and I can put yeah. them together or other things that you can simply doing when you are in a supermarket uh, that you're gonna get a plastic bag and you're gonna put inside the different kind of veggies mm. you can wait uh, the veggie without the plastic and then put them all inside yeah, one one bag very, and put very, all very the, happy, the tags yeah. on you know there are a few things you we can all do actually mm, absolutely basically i guess this this has opened your eyes a lot um oh, you absolutely. you've had obviously opening your eyes by seeing that 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 slick of garbage but then it's it's put you into more educating yourself about the garbage and yeah. solutions and what can happen now. Where do you see this going from now? Do you see it as a positive outcome? Um, yeah, I think uh, sadly seeing those images that probably has connected, you know, people can now visualize the problem more so. So definitely um, locally, um, I think you know, again, like the problems with the ocean, uh, overfishing and, and reef damage and stuff like that. Um, unless you're a, 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 a spear fisherman or a scuba diver local, you know, um, no one else gets to see anything under the water. So we, you know, in the scuba industry have part of our job has been to show people what's under the reflections. Um, so now I think um, perhaps with Indonesia, uh, you know seeing my video seeing underneath it's going to help them I've got uh, a future meeting uh, hopefully with the uh, I think the environment and forestry 
um, people um, to talk about uh, you know solid waste management. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, looking forward to that. Um, probably you know I'm I'm going to be cropping up in lots of documentaries, uh, my footage. Um, so I think it's going to be used, uh, and it's used for connecting people to the, so they they can visualise it, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue learning. I I don't know who, like who's going to be contacting me next to to uh, help them out. But um, if I can, uh, you know, I will. I I if I knew it was I was going to be getting eleven million views on the Guardian repost uh, and, and you know over a million of mine and millions and others if I knew it about, known about that I wouldn't have po posted it in the first place because I'm I it's quite it's getting quite overwhelming yeah? yeah yeah and but now I you know I've been you know found myself in this position and it's kind of a, a duty absolutely to follow it up uh, and obviously um, put the the true message out there um, because I've just posted a video with a load of rubbish and a place uh, and a date you know uh, and a lot of people yes you have only man. just seen that and perhaps just the footage uh, um, without any of the context so you know it's my duty to add the context where I can uh, for example being on here um, so let me ask what would you tell now to a possible uh, uh, holiday maker that is planning to come over to Bali. Is it okay to come over to Bali? Oh, absolutely. We are exceptionally lucky. You know, the whole region uh, is exceptionally lucky to have um, such healthy reefs and the amazing fish life. You know, exactly. I, I'm on Lambongham. We've got the Mola Mola in the, in the high season, uh, which are the weirdest, ugliest fish in the world it's huge and then we have the manta rays all year okay you, you, we get a bit of plastic in the wet season but uh, like the chances of you seeing that mega slick that we saw one week ago hopefully are uh, remote you know uh, very remote you know it was just a weird occurrence with the the uh, uh, with, the, with the currents um that that kind of got pushed in you know we you know everyone in the industry locally was shocked by that you know uh, one of the interesting with the uh, uh, the director yesterday of um, maritime the only instruction he gave me was that make sure that you invite your brother and sister to come to indonesia yeah. to see the beautiful country so yeah everyone should come out and it is an amazing place and uh, it, is, it is one of the most beautiful places yeah, yeah, in the yeah. world and hopefully this uh, will help uh, to make it even better absolutely and, uh, to yeah. make it more aware yeah and maybe and who knows maybe we, they will yeah lead an example you know there and you know we we need to show the people the beautiful world that we do see you know 364 days of the year yes um, that's you know immaculate uh, because it is so amazing and then people know why everyone is campaign, campaigning to protect it because it is just amazing and we're very lucky here. We definitely are. Well, I think with that uh, we, we can pretty much wrap this up here. Um, Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for explaining everything. It's uh, what we're going to lead out with. We're going to put in some some uh, images of, of more raw images of, of what he saw yeah. uh, and, and a few other things that I, I guess we could put in some manta rays, what you usually see at yeah, that yeah, dive yeah. site other yeah, than... The, yeah, other the more typical. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what, um, what why we go see. to that site exactly. and love it so much. So, yeah. we'll, we'll head out with that and uh, thank you very much, Rich, thank for you. stopping by. Thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. Rich, it's in this very busy time to yes. find some time for us. Oh, that's not... Thanks for you guys, anytime. <laughs>